today to celebrate and expand our historic campaign to rescue American workers from job-killing regulations. Before I came into office, American workers were smothered by merciless avalanche of wasteful and expensive and intrusive federal regulation. These oppressive, burdensome mandates were a stealth tax on our people, slashing take-home pay, suppressing innovation, surging the cost of goods, and shipping millions of American jobs overseas. Millions and millions and millions. It never ended. Nearly four years ago, we ended this regulatory assault on the American worker, and we launched the most dramatic regulatory relief campaign in American history by far. No other administration has done anywhere near. So as you heard, Trump was talking about the federal regulations. The Code of Federal Regulations, CFR, is a codification of the general and permanent rules and regulations, sometimes called administrative law, published in a federal register by the executive departments and agencies of the federal government of the United States. So President Trump slashed a lot of federal regulations because of workers, because of our take-home pay, and because of taxes, and all that good stuff. It was a revolutionary promise for every one new regulation issue, we pledged that two federal regulations would be permanently removed. We not only met that ambitious goal, which at the time people said was impossible, we vastly exceeded it. For every one new regulation added, nearly eight federal regulations have been terminated. It's been an incredible achievement. As you can see behind me, we have removed the gigantic regulatory burden Americans have been forced to carry for decades, freeing our citizens to reach their highest potential. Our historic regulatory relief is providing the average American household an extra $3,100 every single year. And we're going up from that number. We're going up from that number. Think of that. $3,100 per house. Great cause. Thank you very much, and thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you all very much. What we have achieved together is truly without precedent. Never happened before. The previous administration added over 16,000 pages of heavy-handed regulations to the Federal Register. That's why nothing got done. Under my administration, we have removed nearly 25,000 pages of job-destroying regulations, more than any other president by far in the history of our country, whether it was four years, eight years, or in one case, more than eight years. The prior administration piled up more than 600 major new regulations, a cruel and punishing regulatory burden that cost the average American an additional 2,000 $300 per year. Think of that. The average American, $2,300 regulation, hitting low-income Americans by far the hardest. These regulations also inflicted a steep economic toll on African-American communities. By contrast, our reforms are putting more money into the pockets of hardworking Americans. In addition to saving every family more than $3,000 per year, my administration has just issued another reform that my Council of Economic Advisors estimates will lower the price of new vehicles by more than $2,200 per vehicle. And I think we're going to get that up to $3,500 per vehicle. Of ensuring clean air, clean water, and a truly pristine natural environment. Our air now and our water is as clean as it's been in the last four decades. Yesterday, our country achieved yet another groundbreaking milestone by completing a sweeping overhaul of America's badly broken infrastructure approval process. It was totally out of control. Instead of taking up to 20 years to approve a major project, we're cutting the federal permitting timeline, it's already been done, to a maximum of two years or less, in some cases even less than one year. And it's possible that it won't qualify. It's possible that it won't be good environmentally or safety-wise, in which case, at least in a period of a year or two, we'll raise the hand and you won't make it. But most projects will make it, but you'll 
won't go for 10, 15, 18, or 20 years. There are many horror stories that we could relate. We're reclaiming America's proud heritage as a nation of builders. My administration has also eliminated massive regulatory barriers in our battle against the China virus. These actions save countless lives, speeding up the production of equipment. That means ventilators like nobody's ever seen before. Probably the greatest source of manufacturing, the greatest achievement since World War II. We're now making ventilators for countries all over the world. And medicine, accelerating the delivery of life-saving treatments and ensuring that we will have a vaccine in a record time. We're doing fantastically well on that. That'll be for another time, another meeting, but we are doing on therapeutics and vaccines incredibly well. No administration in history has removed more red tape more quickly to rescue the economy and to protect the health of our people. When you think of it, uh, we are all set up that as we get the vaccine or therapeutic and we're set up militarily, we're going to be delivering it in record time. It's all set to move. We put an investment up front and we have logistical people, generals, great people. They're going to be delivering this all over the country as soon as we have it. And we've made tremendous progress. You've been reading about it. I heard Trump was talking about all the federal regulations and all the money. And the money and people, I mean, this is the U.S. debt clock. Okay? Trump's bankrupting the Fed Reserve. Just to let you know. Look at how much. Fed Reserve. Now let me show you something how how they fucked us over. I did a, a video earlier showing you the worst of gold per ounce. Thirty one thousand three hundred seventy dollars is per ounce. For let's say you have ten ounces of gold. Ten ounces of gold times this you'll have like three hundred thousand dollars. So this is just a gist of some stuff I'm showing you. You will go on to us.clog.org. I'll put the link in the description below. We've been fucked over by the last four presidencies, or all the presidents. We got screwed over. They stole our money. This is what they did to us. The USA was never in debt. This is why... Obama, when he was president, he kept giving them away, money away to other countries. That's why Bush, when he was president, kept giving away money to other countries. Clinton, Bush 41, Reagan, same shit. All the presidents kept giving away our money to all other countries while they screwed over the, pop, the lower, lower class and middle class. They screwed over the lower class and middle class, and they caused poverty, they caused many deaths, they caused suicides, they caused families to split. It caused many of the problems that you are facing right now. So these Black Lives Matter protests is going on right now. It has nothing to do with anything. They are trying to push Marxism ter ter and terrorism and, and communism into, into this country. They are trying to get rid of this. They are trying to get rid of our capitalists. They are trying to get rid of our social energy. They are trying to get rid of our energy. They are trying to get rid of our jobs. They are trying to put us back in poverty. They are trying to make us collect... Um, what is it? They're trying to make us collect. Let's see. What is it? They're trying to make us collect, you know, welfare and food stamps and all that bullshit. We don't want that. They're trying to put us back on Medicare for all. This is what Ob this is what Biden presidency is. Medicare for all. Trump is private insurance, and you can pick your own insurance, and you can buy over state lines. In this, I'm doing a conservative state, Texas. Population almost 30 million. Unemployed, unemployed almost. It's almost at well, it's at over two million five hundred eighty-eight thousand hundred five. Food stamp recipients, 3,143,719. So we got more food stamp recipients than are employed. So the GDP at Texas is at $1 trillion, almost $2 trillion. The debt is at almost, is at $325 million. The debt to GDP ratio is 
in-state revenue is $257 billion. And, but the spending is at $303 billion. So where, where are they getting that extra $54, $55 billion to spend from? Where are they pulling this money? And the debt per citizen is at $11,150. i am going to show you Colorado next. So Colorado population is way less. It's almost at 6 billion people. 6 million people. Unemployed is way less. It's at half a million. Food stamp recipients, it's less than half a million. The GDP is at $365 billion. The debt is at $68 billion. 19.02% debt on a GDP GDP ratio. So their GDP ratio was was more than Texas. In state revenue is at sixty billion. Spending is at seventy billion. So where are they getting that extra ten billion? And debt per citizen is at eleven thousand eight hundred and eighty five dollars. So why is a blue state debt more than a red state debt? But the debt the debt to the GDP ratio on a blue state is more than a red state. But their GDP is way lesser, and their debt's way lesser, and their state revenue is way lesser, and their spending is way lesser, and their population is way lesser, unemployment, and food stamp. Do you see the difference between this on usdebtclog.org? I would suggest you start studying this and start learning. President Trump earlier was saying in the video, it's over 16,000 federal, right? So thousands of pages they pulled out, over 25,000 pages. So this is, so this is Barack Obama. What he did to America. Okay, I'm not gonna click on any links. Then we want American citizens where it was being robbed under Obama ministry. Yes, Obama administry, Obama presidency was robbing American US citizens by their paychecks. It's all true. It's all in these news articles. Now we want to know who owns the Fed Reserve and what are the families. So we got Goldman Sachs, Rothschilds, Rockefellers, J.P. Morgan's, and the Koch brothers. But one of the Koch brothers died. A couple of Rockefellers died. Rothschilds died. And other people died. Just saying. Look into it. So who owns the Federal Reserve? I will insert this article into the description. I just want to show you something. This is the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. So... In order to the largest to smallest of 1983, Citibank, Chase, Chase, Manhattan, Morgan, Quarantine Trust, Chemical Bank, Manufacturers, Hanover Trust, Bankers Trust Company, National Bank of North America, and the Bank of New York. Mullins, page 179. So I want you to look, and we already know Citibank and Chase Bank and Morgan. We want I want you to look into Chemical Bank. Who owns that? Manufacturers, Hanover Trust, Bankers Trust Company, National Bank of America, and Bank of New York. I want you to look at all the people, all the families that are involved in this, and who these families are, and what kind of corruption they have, and who are they tied with. But remember, everything always falls back to the bush. It always ends up back to the bush. Bush, a.k.a. Scaroff. Remember that. World War II, what was Nazi versus Nazi. Nazi won. So, either way, Nazi won. World War II. Okay, share this video and peace out. Governors, the American people know best how to run their own lives. They don't need Washington bureaucrats controlling their every move and micromanaging their every decision. With each regulation we cut, we are not only returning the money and the power to our citizens, we are draining the Washington swamp, and they're not happy about it, I can tell you that. I think you know that. The swamp was deep. I just didn't know how deep. Deeper than I thought. Joining us today are